fence runs all the way down through all the split posts. It goes across a creek with a heap of gold. G'day folks, Jason and Nick here on the Utter Farm. We're actually on the Utter Farm property this morning. What we're going to be doing is we've got a section of property, probably 25 acres we've never grazed before, because there used to be an old split post barbed wire fence and it crossed our creek crossing about nine times and every time it floods, sticks and that would go through the fence and break the fence. So it's been roughly wired around gum trees. Myself and the neighbour, I've got a contractor in and he run it by or run it round and miss the creek and only go through the creek t twice now but because we're coming into drought we've got a load of pasture up there that's starting to die off and I've slashed the rest and it's starting to come back but it's not ready to graze so that 25 acres has got nice green pasture in but before we let the animals in we want to rip all the barbed wire out because some of it's tangled around trees some of it's broken we don't want to get them tangled in the barbed wire so today's mission is going to be strip all the barbed wire out of that section so we can graze it next week you mind you've had your <laughs> breakfast but anyway guys i better get stuck into it otherwise i'm gonna lose my breakfast <sighs> gully but we're gonna have fun pulling that out as you can see, it's all the way through there. Well, you can't actually see the fence. There's that much lantana, high grass. It's going to be fun trying to pull that through those split posts. We've taken a wire from around these gum trees. There's about five strands of wire. The gum tree has just consumed all that wire, strangling it. So I hate barbed wiring around trees because that happens. This grows a skin over it and just strangles the tree. We've got to go all the way down there to the creek. The fence runs all the way down through all the split posts. It goes across a creek with a heap of galvanised roofing iron they've used to as a flapper or a flood control to stop the cows getting through. And all the way down the creek. I think there's problems. This will be one of Nick's first experiences pulling barbed wire, as in pulling it out of a fence. She, she, she strained a few fences with me. That's a good job. This job, not so good. What are you talking about, Dave? This is heaps of fun. Yeah. What else would I rather be doing? Hey? Got a loads of bar. Got a loads of barbed wire cuts on. That's why I said to put jeans on. And bloody, we had to go through lantana. So you get lantana cuts, then rolling it up. Well, like I said, it's very satisfying seeing the fence that's cleared and just leaving the split posts up and having the animals graze through it. Yeah, well, that's true. Their safety is paramount. The last thing you want, especially if we've got calving season now, and we've got calves dropping on the ground. All we need is a couple of day-old calves to be running through a barbed wire fence and get tangled. It's well worth the effort. And also, it's easy to get in and do your clearing. We've got the area where you've just done, there's a lot of a load of vegetation and lantana, like I mentioned, we want to get the bobcat and excavator down in there and clear that up so we can end up laying out some more seed and mulching it and get impact from the livestock. Once we seed it and they eat the mulch, you get the manure, you get the urine, 
then let it fully recover, get a bit of rain on it to bring pasture through where the bare, the bare bits of dirt are, especially where they pull the lantana out. Lantana grows in a massive lump anywhere up to like two and a half metres wide. Underneath, because it's actually, the sun can't penetrate through the foliage, desertification, bare dirt. If you leave that the way it is, Mother Nace is just going to throw up weeds. So we just throw out a bit of seed, use the rake to get a bit of soil to seed contact, mulch it, bring the cattle in, bit of impact, oh, let sorry. it go, let it recover, let it germinate. A few months later, bring the livestock back in. This is the dilemma I was talking about when it crosses the creek nine times. This is an area. That's our original fence you can see there, where that split post is. There, there. They've had to come off that because obviously at flood time, this probably goes 12 meters, which is roughly that foot underwater. So they've had to put in star pickets and run a temporary fence. But as you can see, even that's collapsed. We get floods, oh, it's hard to say, every few years. And to do that repair every couple of years in nine places becomes a lot. You can see it's star picketed all the way through there. The original split posts are there, but they've done that many repairs. It's very patchy. So what we've had to do now, I got together with my neighbor and we decided to move it out of the creek. So this here would have been on his property. So what we've done is you can see the fence there that the contractors put up. It cuts around the creek. So it only goes through the creek I think it's twice now, maybe once. I think it's once instead of nine times. So I've got a bit of his ground, but up further where it straightens out, he's got about a meter, which is about three foot for around about three or 400 meters of my land. So it evens itself out. Plus there's no maintenance for either of us at flood times. Just that one crossing where it crosses over. We've got to start from there, goes all the way down. That big gum tree right in front of us, it's wrapped around there. That gum would have to be, oh, I'm looking at it, it probably 1.8 meters diameter, which is roughly six foot, seven foot in width. So we've got a bit of new wire here we've got to pull and still there's some old rusty wire in the original split post. The original fence line, as you can see, cut straight through there. But they've had to put a bit of a hack in. They've gone around the gum. Because if you look in this gum here, this is what I was talking about. When you put, they've got bolts in it through here. They must have screwed it in. Bolts coated it off. The tree's grown over that. One, two, three, four, five places. Instead of going straight down, they've gone around and hacked around there. Those few gum trees where Nick is down there. And across there, it goes across a creek. Nick's just cleaning vegetation off those four wires there. So it comes around that, strangles that gum, and there's that flood control gate they put in there. Even the coral grated iron, I've noticed, has rusted right off. So it's been there a while. That's the stop in time of drought. You can walk through there. It stops the cattle walking underneath. That goes around. As you can see, it juts back up the corner to the original fence line. So we've got to pull strip out all this now. That way they're not getting tangled in it when we start grazing there and I'd say it's probably going to be a week and a half, two weeks time. Just have a look around. I know a lot of it's cooch, but it's very green and it'd be probably a foot and a half, two foot high. So I know there's a load of green pasture in here, which the cows can graze and it'll do them over. But hopefully a couple of months, hopefully we get rain, otherwise it's going to be a load of bale feeding for us. Lucky when it comes to the bar feeding, I bought half a semi full last year and we were supposed to have a drought but it ended up being one of the wettest times on record so I've still got loads of hay I can roll out. Well, I can see this is going to be a fun section. You've got a strainer post there. 
this is where that lantana, that dead branch is broken and be easy to stand on and just crush that down to undo those wires on that strainer post. But as you can see, it goes all the way there and then it goes up that dramatically steep hill right up to that gum tree where we untied off from this morning. There's a bit of lantana and long grass in front of that. I've just got to check, check that one, make sure it hasn't got any star pickets that it's wired to. And I'm hoping that I can just pull it downhill starting from there. And walking that way over that hill to the creek and hopefully get enough length to pull her out and wind her up. Now oh, well, well, let the gains begin. Nick's excited. Yeehaw. Did you hear that? Really, she's loving it. Well, that's very ugly through there. It's post in the middle of that, and there's a massive lantana. Well, luckily that lantana looks like pre predominantly it's dead, so it should pull through without too much trouble. Just got to go up now and check that, make sure I've cut the wire up that top where that gum is. We'll pull it through towards the river. So they're all loose tails now, which means by right, head down the bottom there. Where Nick is, right down there at the creek, and I can start pulling this, hopefully, without too much trouble. Well, that was easy said than done. You get absolutely no movement there now. So much for that being easy. Didn't move an inch. There was a lantana, two big bushes of it. There's a big root there tree and one up in there poor old nick was trying to get that one out the ground this is just drops off it's a foot it's as steep hill as it is it just drops off the dirt right there she fell in the barbed wire fence foot got tangled but then it come free and she rolled all the way down the bottom of the hill end up face planting directly in the ground where that post is and i think we might have busted a lip open or she might have bit a tongue or blood all over her face poor bugger Hopefully that lantana was all it was. As you can see, we've got all the ends cut. We cut them this morning. Five strands cut round from that gum. I'll give it another go. Just to give you an idea how steep this hill is. Look down there, it goes all the way down. Well, the creek's down there, but we're working on that strainer post down there. That would have to be a 45 degree hill just about. Looks like we're about, oh, it's at about 25 meters away. And the drop's probably this, probably 20 metres. So what's that? We're probably 75 foot away and the drop's close to 60 foot. So pretty close to 45. No wonder Nick fell over. Plus all this long grass didn't help either. All this past palum through here. Walking up here. And it's slippery. When you lay it down on the ground, it's slippery as in the slide. So we'll go try and pull that wire again. Nick's done a great job here. She's undone those five strands of barb off that tree over there. This is for the flood grate we're talking about before with that corrugated iron in the base of it. So all we need to do now is unwind them from around the gum here, wind them up, and we're done. Perfect timing. Sun's starting to set in the distance. It might be hard to... No, it wasn't. Was but it I just remember the spreader bar was in the middle and I couldn't untie that one. Well, it's it I think it's going to be a pain to try and wind five up to the spreader bar. And, and take, take it out of there. Spread a wire if it's going.
You got the top one down? Yeah. I'll hop back then. I'm just going to pull that one more at a time so they're not falling one another and they're getting all tangled. No, so they come because they're spread around the middle of the point out and pull it. Oh, now, now. You've got that all over your nose. So that's it, day's dusted. Been a massive day for us. We're up at 4.30 just to get prepped so I can have early start. We had 31 degrees today for spring, mm. so it was a hot day. But luckily we're down amongst the creek and the shade, so we had sort of broken shade all day. As you can see, we've got a half a ute full of barbed wire. And had we have left that out, we've, like I said, it's calving, calving season. Yeah. We would have had a lot of issues with calves getting caught in barbed wire. And it's the last thing you want to lose livestock to barbed wire. So it was well worth the effort. We're going to sit down and have a beer or two now and a couple of salted nuts. Be perfect way to end the day. Yes. I often get asked what beer I drink. And I, I drink 4X Gold because I'm a Queenslander. I know you guys overseas wondering why it's 4X. The reason why there's 4Xs is because they can't fit the word perfection around the can. So it's easier to write 4x than perfection because it's just not big enough. But don't go telling too many people that, otherwise I don't think Castle Main can make enough. We'll be uh, running short of our beer. Anyway guys, have yeah. a good morning, have a great afternoon and a terrific evening. Wherever you're watching this from and we'll catch you later. Cheers guys, have a great weekend.